Welcome to St Luke's and Christ Church this morning. It's the first Sunday in the school summer holidays, so whether you're watching this at home or away on holiday, you are most welcome to be with us. Thank you for joining us. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had bought and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Here ends the reading. signed up yet for sin. It's a great reputation, 
that is the extended exhibition on sin at the National Gallery. Indeed, it's the first time there has been such a themed exhibition and places are filling fast. So popular is sin. Works by Andy Warhol, Tracy Emin, inevitably, and as far back as Bruegel and Valethwe. And that's also what we've got in today's Gospel. An exhibition, a collection of works of art. The first two big canvases we've explored in the last two weeks. The image of the sower and the seed, and last week that of the wheat and the tares. But after these two big hitters, there follows in Matthew chapter 13, a whole series of miniatures, as we've just heard. A bush with birds, a housewife baking bread, coins buried in the dust, a jewel amongst the junk, and fishermen with their catch. Small scale, individualized, very human, yes, cameos in this exhibition of parables. Yet each, when we, pray, when we play close attention, is explosive and far-reaching and impacts our whole being. Each of these sketches is framed with the words, the kingdom of heaven is like. That doesn't mean, of course, that the kingdom of heaven, or the rule of God, we might say, is as tiny as a mustard seed, but rather, in each case, that the presence, the rule or reign of God is like what happens in these sketches. So yes, transformation becomes the all-important message, from the traditionally regarded tiniest seed to a sprawling ten-foot-high bush, from a tiny amount of yeast to its ability tra to transform flour into a vast amount of bread from divesting of all that seems to offer security to a realisation of joy beyond imagining in taking a risk on God. Yet these miniatures, these mini parables, when we let them infuse themselves within us, take us to a very different view of reality. They suggest, perhaps above all, that things aren't necessarily what they seem. Being truly religious, according to these paintings, these parables, is about the transformative, outside, beyond the walls of what we would usually consider the religious life. This is about the everyday. Seeds, yeast, hidden treasure, fish. The everyday being signs and tokens of something else. The breaking in of the rule of God the eye-opening to God's presence can be caught and felt and touched in the most unexpected places and peoples as times, as we perhaps had experience over the last few months. This openness is what George Herbert, the priest and poet, described as heaven in ordinary, not something to be owned or controlled or rationed out by the church to the pure or faithful alone, but rather, it is the lavishing of love upon his children by God, who is simply generous and inclusive and inviting by nature. That's just what God is like. And our living can be transformed into that generosity and inclusivity and inviting nature when we allow ourselves to see God working in the world and when together with God, we dare to inhabit that picture. When we open our eyes and minds and hearts to what is already there, we too can be transformed by it. These cameo parables suggest that God's presence and purposes are hidden just below the surface of life and break through in surprising, un unplanned moments. We've all had experience of that. The unexpected kind word from that neighbour who was rather grumpy. The unlooked for generous act of a child. The acceptance by a stranger. Can't we see it for what it is and imitate it? Inhabit it? 
But we can and must also learn how to uncover this hidden God in our midst. We need to risk opening our eyes, our minds, our hearts. Jesus asked his disciples whether they understood what he meant in telling these parables, to which they blithely respond, oh yes, Lord. But the remainder of the gospel seems, if anything, to provide evidence that they went on failing to understand, failing to take this risk on Jesus of Nazareth. We have no excuse to walk in that particular way of discipleship. At baptism preparation evenings, we talk with parents about the journey of faith with their newborn children and how to resource it as they grow. Sometimes new parents will broach the subject of how to pray with their children. And my response is always simple. Don't overdo it. Ask your child at an appropriate time, at supper, in the bath, just before bed, what's been the best thing about today? And if they say strawberry ice cream, your prayer with them should be, thank you God for strawberry ice cream, amen. Begin where they are. Begin where you are. Prayer is our connecting ourselves with God by listening and occasionally talking. But all, above all, it's about connectivity. And if today that connectivity is located in strawberry ice cream, that's where you need to look for God. In the enjoyment, the taste, the pleasure. Just as in the treasure in the field or the pearl of great price. If the exhaustion of a session of cooking for your family, or in my case a week's worth of ironing, gives you a sense of satisfaction, then like the yeast in the bread, those small tasks are a moment of transformation, that the presence of God is to be found in the addressing of others' needs, in providing for and sharing life with those whom we love, heaven in ordinary. And then we might indeed be able to answer the question Jesus sets his disciples. Do you understand? A little more truthfully with a yes. For it is, of course, connecting with the Spirit of God by which the world is already permeated that we can and must engage by prayer, yes, but also by taking time and space to listen by worshipping at home, online or physically together, by engaging in giving and service. Solomon is asked what he most desires as king. He's already got the wealth and the women, so he asks for the third W, wisdom. Not intelligence, not power, not longevity, but wisdom. An openness, a humility, a self-understanding, a way of digging under the surface to find that hidden God in the transformative strength of heaven in ordinary, transforming the latent into the actual. Something we can perhaps learn from our children as they regularly sing lustily of God in the words of Sidney Carter, you are older than the world can be, you are younger than the life in me ever old and ever new, keep me travelling along with you. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, thank you for your good creation. We give you thanks for all those things in this world that we enjoy and can celebrate. For all the ways in which we see and can catch a glimpse of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. But we continue to pray too for those parts of the world where the joy and goodness of your kingdom is not easily seen. For all communities badly affected by the coronavirus, for the ongoing concerns about environmental degradation, and for continuing tensions and conflicts between the West, Russia and China. We ask for your forgiveness where human brokenness has distorted the goodness of your world. And we pray for your peace, justice and guidance, especially for world leaders, but also for all of us, your children, as we are called to participate in the small yet transforming ways of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church across the world, that by your spirit it would be a place of light where there is darkness. We pray particularly for the life of the church in this country, for greater unity as one body, witnessing and helping to build your kingdom. And so we pray for our leaders in our Anglican tradition, Archbishop Justin and our Bishops Sarah and Graham, we pray too for our own church community here at St Luke's and Christchurch. May we each grow in and better reflect the love that you have shown us, and so always be mindful of those in our own community and beyond who are feeling lonely, lost or abandoned. This week we pray particularly for our summer programme, for all the young people and children in our communities, that they might know what it is to be fully loved and fully known by you. Bless the final preparations and these three weeks together we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for our own community here in Chelsea, we pray too for our own lives, that we may each know your goodness more and more each day that you would help us to make time and space to open ourselves up to your presence with us and so to serve you and those we meet in all that we do. So in a moment of stillness, we pray for all those people and situations that are on our hearts at this time. Might we know your love and presence with us in those situations that worry us and with all those we love and care for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your healing kindness, we pray for all those who are suffering at this time, praying especially for those who are sick. Ian Fraser, Ian Lowe, Deborah Sidwell, Neil Buckingham, Edward Harvey, John Hutchinson, Rosie Fox Andrews, Sister Margaret, Emad, John Jacobson and Faith. We continue to pray for all those who have recently died too. Elizabeth Jeffcoat, Eileen Maiden, Nigel Weiss, David Reed Scott, Lovado de Amador and Bill Scott. May they and all those who mourn them know your peace and presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join together in the words Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.